Hello everybody, this is Waldorf. And this is Stetler. And today we're doing a review of Shogun Miniatures, Movement Trays, and Magnetic Bases. Yes. I don't know why the B in Bases is not capitalized. I was just, I was just noticing that is. also. But, uh... I'm not fixing it at this point. No, I don't think so. <laughs> now that we've already mentioned it. We messed up the last one, so why should we fix yes. this one? I'm... It should be a new trend. Everyone should have one typo, a typo. or one uh, you know what? bad punctuation. Let's do that. <laughs> yes, that'll we'll be see who thing. notices. Exactly. No one noticed the other one, or at least no one said anything about <laughs> yeah. it. Now I'm going to have a bunch of people going back and look at all our videos to find it. <laughs> exactly. That'll drive them insane. Anyway, um, I'm good at reading. I can read everything that says. <laughs> anyway. Um, these are movement trays and bases, which for, for any game system, really, but right. for us, well, for me. <laughs> for, for you, it's Ninth Age. For me, for it's, me, it's for a couple different uh, game systems. But Correct. yeah. So yeah, we thought we'd just go through the product and our, our thoughts on it. Um, we, we tend to like them. Yes. Um, the, tend uh, to being a, uh, <laughs> a, a major under... Yes, <laughs> understatement. Uh, understatement, yeah, yeah. thank but you. But yeah, so... Um, and uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and show it. So if you go to, um, they have their own website, Shogun Miniatures. You can go on the web and shogunminiatures.com. And this is their this is their homepage. And basically, you can see some of their galleries, some of the things that they've done with the different movement trays, etc. Um, they have steel trays, which we're going to talk about. They have magnetic bases, which we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. They have metal bases also, which we're not going to talk about because we don't, we haven't used those, so really can't comment on them. But you can actually see they're pieces of metal. So, yes. <laughs> the, um, and yeah, and so let's start off talking about their movement trays. All right, um, moving on. We have there we go. Right there we go. So and they have two different kinds of movement trays, and we're going to focus on the flanged unit trays as opposed to the flat unit trays. The flat unit trays are just like the flange ones, except they're flat. <laughs> they don't have the little lips on the side. Correct. And if you look at the top of the page, you can see some of the flat examples. They're good. I think they're very nice for, for small scale figures uh, if you're going to use their magnetic bases. Uh, Correct. So they work quite well for. They do. And, but this is kind of their page, and you see they have all different sizes, and the prices are quite reasonable, mm -hmm. frankly, if you compare some of these trays to what you're paying for resin trays, etc. Right, now, I mean, a 25 millimeter, whatever you want to call it, horde, well, not even a horde, I mean, it's a horde base, 10 by 3, it's just off the bottom of this page, of course. Yes. As luck would have it, um, is about 4 bucks, yeah. if that. As opposed to 8 or 12, which you see. Correct. Now, these are very basic trays. Um, mm -hmm. As you'll see. As you'll see uh, momentarily, so. No, we're not moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Staying on this page. Yeah. Oh, before we go any further, uh, one other thing I wanted to add is... These are the bases he has preset. If you need a different size base, yes, he will do them. Um, just send him a quote, ask him what you want, and he'll give you a quote on what it would take to do it if he can do it. Yeah, because there are some sizes. Mm -hmm. If you want to do the flange trays, it's a little problematic. For Correct, them. because his machine apparently works one way but not the other. Right. Anyway, so. so this is a sample of his tray. So it's basically stainless steel. And you'll see that it's got the corners, uh, sorry, the edges turned up on on three sides. So the back is, is, is the back or the front, depending on how you want to do it, is still open. And you'll see the corners are uh, or are open. Or open in the core front, usually right. the front corners of the base. Yes. Now the nice thing about having the back open is that uh, what we tend to do is. If you have like a large unit, a horde tray, and you don't want to do it necessarily in one big tray. Right. You can do two small trays, and you can just put them right next to each other, and it's seamless, and you don't even mm -hmm. notice. Um, the uh, the trays, they said they are stainless steel, so they do take a, a little bit of prepping um, in that the uh, you can't just put acrylic paint on them or it'll scratch very easily. Um, this is another view of the tray turned upside, upside down, down. And, and you can get a better view of, of the back of it and how, the, how it flanges down. Mm -hmm. The... Um, and uh, so now this tray, basically uh, what we did is we just did a quick scour with a piece of sandpaper, very light, hit it with some primer coat and then just hit it with um, enamel uh, brown uh, spray paint. The idea is you pick a spray paint that is very similar to your base color. The edge of your bases. Right. Yeah. And what's kind of neat about these um, 
and this is the bottom of the same tray. <laughs> Which tends to get scratched up a bit, but yes. it's the bottom of the tray. Well, the other thing, too, is they do get, they're going to make their metal. They're going to get scratched up. Mm -hmm. We just hit them again with spray paint. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> You take your guys off the base, you set them on a piece of cardboard, and you spray, hit and, them one more time. Yeah, just zap them again. You yep. know, if you want to, you can use a brush, whatever you want to do, but spray paint. And they just paint up really fast. Mm-hmm. And there we go. So now here's the only challenge is, is I, is I kind of use slightly too dark of uh, brown on <laughs> my bases. It's black on your bases. It, it looks like it in the photo, yeah. so I have to fix that. But what's nice about the trays is, so it doesn't, is that because of the flange and how it comes up, if you paint them about the same color, your bases in the tray kind of blend together right. on the tabletop. It's almost invisible. So it's, it's close to being invisible. Um, the, uh, the, the bases tend to be slightly larger than the width of of the models in the cool. unit right so you have a, a little bit of play uh, mm -hmm. uh range which some people might not like but i'm a big fan of that because invariably you get figures that don't quite go together quite well enough uh, but what is nice it, it is close enough so you don't have that problem where you have with a lot of these like diorama based bases which they have like these really nice borders that look really good mm -hmm. and but, you guys don't quite fit in them but you guys don't need to fit in them or when you're getting in the combat, you're at, you actually end up being half an inch away from one another, <laughs> correct? Because your tray is in the way, right? Or, or you get into a discussion, you know, oh, was that in charge range? Or oh, am I measuring from the edge of the base? Or the fig, yeah. Or am I measuring from the base of the figure? So this mm -hmm. kind of helps you eliminate uh, some of that some of that challenges. Correct. So for straight gaming, um, it works out quite well. Now these yeah. are uh, actually their trays. Uh, these are these are uh, old GW Bretonian um, um, yeah, yeoman. Mountain yeoman. Yeah, so they're plastic horses with metal figures on them, mm -hmm. and you see how if the brown was a little bit better, but it kind of blends in. Now let's turn sideways, show you the strength of the magnet. Right. So. And if you really want to see the strength of the magnet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now these are not overly heavy figures. They're not light right. figures either. But you know, now if you shake it, they're going to come off. But, right. Uh, but for just general, you know, holding it in your in your uh, transport tray, which mm -hmm. if you magnetize the bottom of your transport tray, you just drop these trays in and organize your army. And just for picking up, it's going to keep your figures relatively uh, straight uh, right. in, what, in contact. Because what you've done is, which we haven't seen yet, is you've got magnetic basing on the bottom. Correct. You've got the peel and stick magnets on the bottom right, of these right. bases of the models. Yes. Um, and there's... So this is a actually a unit of uh, old uh, GW uh, Bowman, Bretonian Bowman. So these are metal figures. So showing the same thing, mm -hmm. turn sideways, yep. turn it upside down. Once again, they're staying. Yeah. If you shake it, they're going to come off. But, yes. <laughs> but, but to show you, you know, just a, just a general, just a rigidity and strength. And Another picture of the same unit. This is some GW, more recent Bretonian plastic bowmen. So these stick very well because they right. have, virtually have no weight. You, <laughs> you probably actually shake that base a little bit. No. Now, these are really heavy figures. Uh, these are old Bretonian um, um, questing, knights. questing knights. And while they were okay when we turned them at 90 degrees, uh, the standard was so heavy and all and all. Honesty, it wouldn't hold. <laughs> it's know? not going to hold if it goes any for much further. Than <laughs> if this. it goes upside down, right. <laughs> but yeah. although a number of the other figures did, but anything that was super heavy, like one of these big metal standard yeah, figures, big metal standard, and that's all solid standard. metal. It, it's Correct. it's not you know their his magnets aren't that strong. I, don't, I think if the magnet was that strong, you wouldn't be able to pull it off. Horse head as metal as well on these. Yes, isn't it? Correct. The figures yeah. are metal. The horse head's metal. And, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, that's a chunk. Yes, it's quite um, heavy, but it holds up. So then it takes us to, now he has his own magnet bases. Now these are basically a piece of plastic with magnet attached to them. Mm -hmm. And how he has them kind of designed, as you see on the right-hand side, is you actually glue your figures onto these, and his trays are actually designed to work with these bases. Right. Um, these actually, what, again, what we're using back here was the magnetic peel and stick sheet. magnets that go on the bottom. Right, which we're going to come to. Had yeah. these been... Had these been these true, these magnets, these are much stronger. It's the same magnet. Is it? Yeah. Because when I put them on, they seemed much stronger. Well, because there was no figure on the base that we, we placed. But it's basically the same that magnet sheet. That could be a big difference. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway. So basically, this is plastic with a magnet sheet. And mm -hmm. so you can use these these magnet uh, bases. Here's here's an example. And it's just sort of light reflecting off the right. top of them. It's not actually white speckles. <laughs> I thought <laughs> you were doing a space, so this is space the, bases. Yeah, this is with the plastic side up. Mm -hmm. And then this is with the magnetic side uh, up. And you can 
barely tell the little yeah. the sheet. And this is basically his bases on top of his trace. Now you'll notice in this case, the magnetic uh, the base comes exactly to the top of the flange, where the GW ones stand a little bit higher Correct. because they're thicker. Because so, they're not quite as thick. You're right. And if you're a huge fan of the GW bases, you might not like these. These are square cut. Right. They're not the you know the slight angle cut that the GW ones are. Right. Um, I tend to like these better, but I'm not rebasing my army. Correct. I, <laughs> I might not like, I like the GW ones for the old, you know, for the 28 millimeter fancy mm -hmm. type of gaming. For her other game systems, not so much. And then I've actually, you just an example of them in their tray. Yeah. Um, yes. Now. You want to stay there? Okay. <laughs> no, no, I want to come here. Now, by special order, and we only learned this because I wrote to him and I asked him the question because... Um, we both have relatively vast numbers of troops that we weren't going to totally rebase for for playing the Ninth Age, which is what we play with our with our fantasy based figures. So, and that basically asks the question: Is there a way to get your uh, magnets separate of having to have the plastic? So I didn't have to go with it. And he basically wrote back and he said, "Yeah, he could do that. It's not on his website." Um, but he was willing to sell them to people. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you'd write just like you do with the magnetic bases and, and ask them the price. If I remember correctly, they were slightly less expensive. They're basically peel and stick. You see the white there is actually a, a piece of paper that peels off. And the top here, as you see, is, is the magnet piece. And you can get them any size. And I got them, and we both got them to fit perfectly under GW bases. Right. The 20s, the 25s. Yeah, 20, 25s and 40s. I got 40s. So for Monsters Infantry. And the horse bases we ordered at, what, 23 by 50? Yes, because if you look at GW bases, they're actually not quite 25 they millimeter. Not, the, the, the horse bases are not 25. Exactly. So you actually needed to slightly undersize the base. So right. when you're asked, but best would you bait. You measure exactly what you need, and you ask them, and he pretty much can give it to you. Now, I yeah. like to... Uh, <laughs> so basically... The big thing he says about these things is what's important though is when you adhere them is you have, need to make sure that you have a smooth surface mm -hmm. and it's clean so you don't have you know dirt and stuff so it gets all bumpy and these bases will stick really well. Yes. I have to admit I cheated a bit. I actually just adhered these to for the plastic guys to the existing GW bases which only have an outline. Right. So did I. And they and they stuck quite well. It's not what he recommends, though. He recommends you know full Correct. full bases. So if you're somebody who like those, those resin bases, mm -hmm. these are perfect because you can stick them to the bottom of them, and they're and, fine. And you'll yeah. have a really strong uh, uh, adhesive bond for the things. I did my uh, vampires in these, the peel and sticks. Yeah, and they worked great. So I pretty much did the peel and sticks for my entire Bretonian slash Equitane uh, army. I don't know if you. I mean, you you know, I've got the skeletons. They're the little kind of the spindly ones yes. from uh, War Games Factory. Yes. I actually these magnet <laughs> bases cause a slight problem because they stick really good to the trays, and the guy's kind of spindly. Oh. So you kind of have to be careful <laughs> of removing careful fingers uh, so you because be... I'm pulling guys off. You know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Do you mind? I haven't had that challenge with any of the Equitane guys. That's how good they stick. You yeah. won't because my guys yeah. are at that little teeny spindly legs. Right. And these are not legs. the thin bases like you get at like a Michael's or like a lot of craft stores that are super thin and right. the magnet wears out pretty fast. You can see there's a little bit of thickness. These these them. have a little bit of thickness. Oops, so, yep, back the other way. Now, the, way, the other way I use these, the, the movement uh, bases, is I actually use them as movement trays, <laughs> the, <laughs> which is not what they're designed for, but they work fantastic. For now, these these happen to be fifteen millimeter uh, Seven Years War Prussian uh, Grenadiers. Oops. The uh, and basically, I mount all my guys on metal bases because for fifteen millimeters, I don't want a lot of thickness on my bases, mm -hmm. but I like a little bit of thickness on the movement trays to give something to grab onto. And these are just wonderful. I've been uh, using them for all my smaller scale armies to make movement trays with. Yeah, they work fantastic for what you're what you're using them for. Right. I said, and it's the same, or you just take them as, as their intended purpose, which is as movement trays. But if you have like tons of 15 millimeter guys and in, in like Napoleonics or Seven Years War, or Ancients or whatever, and you're looking for some way and you already have them on metal uh, square bases, which is not uncommon, this is a great way to give you, you know, movement trays. Same thing. You just tell them what size you want for the type of unit you're doing, ask for yep. it, and voila.
and he'll he'll send them to you. He will. Now again, you have I have to pay him, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you do have to pay him. Yes. Um, wow, I did not have ever seen this from this one down here in the bottom left corner with the angled. Yeah, that's kind of odd. Um, but no, I uh, I like these a lot. I have not tried the these type up here without the flanges. But if you can see, if you do go without the flanges, that would make your base. And you can see on these knights particularly. Mm -hmm. Horsemen, I guess, not knights. Um, Grenadiers of Cheval. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just generic guys on a horse. Yeah. Uh, the base kind of disappears almost completely. Even right. with, especially without the flanges. Yes. I mean, it's almost gone. So... Depending on what look you're what you're looking for in that, I think if you're going with um, smaller figures, uh, or if you're going for maybe the uh, two twenty five light, very light figures, mm -hmm. um, and you want to use his movement uh, trays, uh, movement bases, then the fl the f uh, flat bases make a lot of sense. Okay. If you're going with guys who have a little bit of heft, um, particularly yeah, metal but... figures. Uh, the particularly extra security the, of the flange. The flange gives you something to grab onto mm -hmm. because the the probability is is with the, something that has a little bit of heaviness to it. If you grab the figures, they're in it. You're going to be squeezing them in and correct because your pinching your whole pinch unit right. and, and taking it off the base. So good point. So I yeah, think the flange is. is better for those types of of, of, of models. But said so we like these a lot. Um, you'll see. I mean, we both also have some of the dynamic type of bases, but. I tend to like those more for a set for you know display bases, not as much for for gaming with just the just, dynamic bases. Yeah, is that what you're for okay. other that other companies Correct. make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I like these a lot for gaming. Um, I'm I'm moving to them because um, I I like them as I rebase armies. I'm going to be using these, but rebasing is a, <laughs> a a very minor project that I'll never get to. Yes, but I bought a ton of them to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it just. I just one day just started sticking stickers on the bottom of my bases and you know spray painted the trades. Didn't take long at all. I was no, it's I totally magnetized my entire army, mm -hmm. and uh, and I've got you know a number of other armies in twenty eight millimeter that I want to get to, and I've got a ton of these little slotters that I use for my fifteen millimeter seven years war, and I have a number of those armies, and that's really sped up my gameplay because. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Moving individual bases and, and horse and musket periods can be a bit, uh, especially when you play with a lot of figures, slows right. the game down a lot. But if you're somebody who um, you know wants to have a lot of units, the, the trays really work out well. And I said, and and in some game systems, and, and we talked a little bit about in fantasy where you may have like a horde, and you may want to decide between horde or or bus. Right. So instead of having one huge humongous uh, tray, you take two square ones. That way. For the games you want to have them in uh, horde, you're in horde, and you want to re change formation. Boom. And that prevents the problem I have, and that's like I don't want to change their formation. Right. <laughs> I'm same. It's I don't like, want to change the tray. You're, you're if in I a just hurry. have to move this tray behind the other one. Perfect. It's, it's done. And you're you're in a hurry in the middle of a game for whatever reason. You get the clock is right. You didn't want to take f 20 figures and reallocate them <laughs> and move everybody around, especially some of those figures that have to line up perfectly right. to get them into the trays. So, you know, it's just it's just a, a little cheat way to do that. And you have that in a lot of uh, horse and musket periods. You may have assault columns versus lines. So you only need two bases quite often mm -hmm. to bounce between the two formations. Two formations you know? yeah. So it just works really well. So that's kind of uh, our, our thoughts yeah. on uh, Shogun Miniatures movement trays and bases. Yeah, if you uh, order, put a little note. Tell him, tell him where you heard about it. I would uh, just like to uh get a little bit of credit for it <laughs> he's not giving us anything i just <laughs> yes we <laughs> we just support him because we like the guy because we like we like the guy and he's you know very friendly and of yes. course we uh it's been very helpful to us <laughs> we've been buying lots of stuff from <laughs> our our, our, get, well, our respective gaming groups have been also correct so, and yeah. you, if you'll i don't know if you'll you'll probably notice well if you ever play a lot of our guys you'll see a lot of these bases cropping up on a lot of the other players <laughs> as right, well right anyway um that's the shogun miniatures review Yes. Thanks for listening. Till next time.